This is a 20 minute presentation. I'll try to leave some room at the end for questions. Um, but in the meantime, I'll get started. Welcome to Teach OSM, the new site. Glad to be here. It's been, I don't know, two years since my last presentation, but always love coming to stay the map. And really excited today to present the work we've done since the beginning of the year. Um, the development team I, I led in addition to the Teach OSM team that worked with us. For this uh, presentation, I'll start with the introduction, then go over why a new site was desired and what the initial concept was. And then I'll go over the process, we, um, the different steps we did to sort of build the site from the beginning to where we are right now. And then we'll do a live demo. And then after that, we'll lift the covers up a little bit. I'll guide you through some of the technical aspects and the architecture of the site. And then a roadmap of new features we're going to be building within the next uh, few months. And then lastly, a call to action and how you guys could get involved. I'm part of the GeoSurge team. Unfortunately, we're not affiliated with the SOTA. But usually, you'll find us with um, lots of caffeine and ready to go plugging away on encoding projects. Uh, Daniel Dufour, Victoria Mack, um, Stephen Payton, and myself um, all worked on this starting at the beginning of the year. And we complement each other with different skill sets as well. Um, if you're interested in chatting more about what we do, you could email me at tom at geosurge.io. Also, a little bit about myself professionally. I also uh, support the State Department. And with the State Department, we have an initiative called MapGive. MapGive is a initiative which supports uh, volunteers to create mapping data for humanitarian and development projects. And we do a lot of training, organize mapathons. We also supply satellite imagery services for tracing. Um, we also have a virtual student program. It's called um, Virtual State Federal Service. And this year, we're working with four interns. And it's been great because we've been doing this for several years. And it's been my opportunity to help other college students develop their skills and introduce them to OpenStreetMap. And then finally, this year, I've been assisting the World Bank Geospatial Operations Support Team. And they are interested in also discovering how they could further support the OpenStreetMap community. So happy to chat more about that. We use OpenStreetMap a lot as a data source, because often it's the best available data that we could use. And um, we're interested in answering questions like, how, do we, how can we best measure OSM completeness in an in a area? And this is the Teach OSM team who we worked for on the site, on the website. Uh, Stephen Johnson, Maggie Colley, and Sean Goulet. And they were really great to work with. Um, like at each of our weekly meetings, all of our developers, we attended even though we didn't have to, because it was really a pleasure working with them. Uh, so what is Teach OSM? Well. Teach OSM, the purpose is to promote the use and adoption of OpenStreetMap in the classroom to teach geography. And it was chartered in 2016 as a project of OpenStreetMap US and to provide operational support and strategic guidance for the edu educational outreach mission of OpenStreetMap US. It's led by a volunteer steering committee and um, there's a lot more uh, participants of this initiative as well. So the site, the current site, was about five years old. Um, so we wanted to sort of take advantage of doing a refresh. Originally, it was sort of a fork of Learn OSM, which is another great site. Um, but it wasn't like sort of customized to objectives of Teach OSM. In addition to that, they wanted to better serve um, expanding the range of resources to teachers and apply a focal point to geography. And they had a very clearly defined way of how to do this um, in the proposal. So when I was approached with other GeoSurge members, I was really um, into working on this project just because my previous interactions 
with a lot of these same folks. So I was excited about this opportunity. And a little bit about more of like my personal opinions on uh, GIS, OpenStreetMap, and education is that it's like a gateway drug. Um, you, you, know, you might go to a mapathon, you might get peer pressured by a friend to go, and then you, know, you meet someone like Chad Blevins, and then you, and you're hooked. Um, and then you start discovering like, more things, um, and then suddenly, you know, this is why I see the same people at, at this conference every year, because you, know, you guys are in for some reason or another, and you want to sort of support the community. And experiencing many mapathons, many, many mapathons, I feel like it's a great way to introduce open mapping to new people, but often it's not enough. And I think a better way would be in the classroom, um, better than through when I was going through school. Never heard of OpenStreetMap, never heard of OpenJS before. In the classroom setting, whether you integrate it into a geography class or another subject, you have uh, more of a time to introduce the different concepts of OpenStreetMap and where it could lead to. So that was my slide transition. Yeah, so um, at least from my perspective, perspective, it's easy, it's easy to jump from OpenStreetMap to geography, uh, GIS, coding. These are all my personal experiences. But you could also use it as a data source to integrate into any other subject as well and many other ways. So we took sort of um, the initial concept we had, which followed the proposal pretty well. And since this is an initi initiative you know, with a limited budget, and as developers, we like to be efficient in um, our projects as well, we wanted to build a static site. So the site was performant and didn't cost much money at all. And also, um, it was clear that we wanted an open source project. And GitHub is a good platform to make that happen. And in addition, we want to see if we could add a user interface editor. Uh, because not everybody on the TeachOSM team or potential future people on the, on the TeachOSM team will know how to uh, modify a repo, which if I show you later, it's not like the most pretty thing, but it's always you know, nicer to have a user interface where you could find like a web page, you could see like a paragraph and you could edit, um, and then you could commit it and a few minutes later it would reflect on the website. Um, that's on the future roadmap, but we're still thinking about it. And lastly, um, the traditional tools to build a static site won't actually take you 100% of where we need it to go. Um, the focus of the site ended up being a lot about sharing content, sharing lesson plans, sharing projects, and enabling people to do that easily. So as I'll demonstrate later, that involves users using an upload form and submitting a document or PDF to the site. And that upload piece, it either traditionally requires a server, or in this case, you went with a microservice, um, which has its advantages. Uh, the process started off with outcoding, you know, just understanding, you know, what, what the customer wanted, what their goals and objectives were, and then um, planning more detailed into site maps, and, and we ended up doing mock-ups. And we asked for feedback on, hey, do you have any similar websites that you guys really like? We could show you some concepts. And that was step three. And then once we were done with all those steps, we were ready for the biggest step, which is actually coding, and that ended up taking the most time as we originally envisioned. And then we're, right now, we're, um, we're modifying step five. It's not a singular launch, but it's a soft launch. Um, uh, getting getting the, the website in time for, for this presentation caused us to do a little sprint, but not every single feature is there yet. But the basic functionality is there. 
So we'll keep on um, adding more features in the next few months. And then we want to spend less time on the project, but be there for support, for maintenance, make sure that there's no bugs. So five things that helped us with the process was just regular communication, because that means less mis miscommunication. He relied heavily on, on Google Docs and uh, mockups so people could edit um, documents themselves so we, we don't we capture good ideas. Um, again, I talked about plain design before code and mockups. And then we're a big fan of GitHub issues. That lives within the code repository itself. And it's great because you could add different types of labels to each issue and you could assign issues to different, to different participants, whether it's developers or tasks requested from TeachOSM. Um, and then you could just close out issues as well. Here's an example of the site map. Um, it's basically, let's list out every page that will exist on the website and what that page will have. Um, and then let's reiterate on that. And I wanted to move from the site map to just prototyping a site, because that's how I usually do things. Um, but we found out the better way. One of my uh, colleagues, Steven, he found, um, we use Whimsical for mockups, and that was sort of like the intermediary phase between this initial site map and using whimsical mockups to sort of further refine the placement of different parts of the web page. So now for the actual demo here. It's a really fast car there, like our site is. Um, so the front page is sort of very image heavy. You know, not a lot of text, but it tells you what the overall purpose is. And we also want to experiment with possibly doing other background images or maybe even one of those web um, videos, perhaps. But in the front page, you basically have um, about section, a calendar, and contact us forms. So you could read the mission statement of TeachOSM and automatically grasp that they're working on three main different themes, educational content, educator training, and open mapping resources. You could go ahead to read the, the newest blog post here and see if there's any other events in the horizon as well. And this is connected to a Google Calendar, so it's very easy for the team to add an event here. And then you could um, contact, and it'll just go to a singular email from them. And then we have a blog page. We ported um, the existing blogs from the, the existing site. This is uh, one way we want to engage the community. We're looking for new blog posts, guests, writers, case studies. Um, you, you, there's some, you know, you could, you could read about um, GIS Day farmers market mapping and see, you know, that's something you want to do um, as well. Yeah, you could always uh, donate easily to OpenStreetMap US right here. It'll take you straight to the form right here. Super easy. And then um, there's going to be a, a new page called the resources page. And we're right in the middle of a, of a new layout change. So we have it I'll put it in, in the nav bar. Um, but that will be a place where there's existing resources that aren't you know, static documents, but they're great online resources. Resources you guys are already familiar with, like Learn OSM, how to find the nearest mapper near you, uh, Overpass Turbo. These uh, we just want to link to and have a little context behind them. So that will live in the resources page. Um, but we spent the most time in development in the projects page. So. With the projects page, you have a layout of all the existing projects. You could, you could search, and this is another place where we want to really start connecting with other educators. Um, there's a ton at this uh, conference, um, and we just want to start connecting for existing content people want to share. Right now, uh, Sean made a really great, a great module. Um, there's actually 
like over 11 modules, and they're all here. Um, they're a sequence. But each of them have you know, a title, abstract, a date, and potentially tags. And it's a keyword search. So you could search for like module two and see that module two. Um, but also, all, all, everything's attributed, so you could filter projects as well by all, any of these filters, including tags. Um, and tags are a combination of tags we put as default tags, but you could also add your own freeform tags. So you could do like population and migration, and this module is relevant to that topic. You could clear your filters, close the filter box, and you could also add your own project as well. And this is by clicking the plus button. And it's a, it's a simple form, not, not too much here, but you would put essentially your name, your OSM username, confirm it, You would add a title. Subtitle. Description. And then a project has an image. That's like a thumbnail image. Um, It's very small here. And then this is where you'd upload your document. You have many different options here. You could upload a PDF, um, a Microsoft document, a, a LibreOffice document, even a JPEG if you wanted to. And then this is all the attributes. So it could be for um, secondary students. It could be at a certain level. Um, educator preparation time is supposed to give you a gauge if you're a teacher, how much time it will take you to prepare this, this project. And also a duration estimate of the actual activity whether it's a desktop project or a field or field project or mobile. And adding tags is, is optional as well. And um, that's about it. Then you have to uh, verify you're not a robot. Um, usually I fail at these. <laughs> Let's see. I have luck this time. Um, and then actually a lot of different things is going on at this step, and that's what um, my next slides are for. But in essence, that is what the site is um, right now. So it'll get uploaded, and then in the future, we want to build maybe like an email notification because it doesn't automatically show up. There's a validation step where the core team has to approve it. Um, time check. Okay. Well, I covered the most important things because this is like the nerd stuff right here. Um, but there are uh, GitHub repos. GitHub is awesome. And then this is like behind the scenes because this is like the microservices working right here. Um, like files get uploaded to S3 buckets and then there's another open source project. Have any of you guys used LibreOffice? They're sort of like a headless version and it's running on AWS and it's doing the actual conversion of the documents into PDFs and um, Microsoft um, 
And then here's like the actual data JSON that gets sent to these microservices. Uh, so like this is an existing project, which is awesome that we integrated. And then um, we have the roadmap. So we want to um, add the resources page soon. We need your help adding more content. Uh, we want to add a UI-based editing interface that doesn't suck. And um, long term, I'm really excited about uh, OSM Teams that, that Mark presented. I think that has the potential to add a lot more functionality as well. So you could look at the code if you want to. Also, I noticed that there's an educator's birds of the feather today at noon. I'll be there if you want to chat more. Also, another initiative that, um, that this initiative and many others support is the third week of November's OSM Geo Week. So we're having a birds of a feather um, today, um, Sunday at 1030 in Minnesota. And if you have any questions, um, email info at teachosm.org. And um, we don't have time for any questions, but thank you a lot for coming.